I love playing with water. I love watching water do what it does. And the way I've learned about all the art materials that I enjoy working with is just giving myself time to play with them and see what they want to do. So I've started this off with a dot of clear water on a piece of watercolor paper and mixed up some student grade watercolor, just one of those old kids kits. And I'm just touching the color to the edge of that clear, wet dot and watching what happens, watching how the water pulls the color in. And then when I add a little more to the edge, how it deepens at the edge. And how when I flick fresh, clean water onto the surface, it moves all that pigment around and things happen. I don't know what's going to happen. It's an experiment. And it's a wonderful medium to experiment with because it's just playful and watery and, and unpredictable. Some people say watercolor is the hardest medium to, to master, but it is really the easiest medium to just enter into playfully. With a little tissue paper, I'm dabbing away. With a little more paint mixed with water, I'm adding in. And this is really just an invitation to explore. It's an invitation to observe what happens in this relationship, not only between oh, yeah. the water and the color and the paper, but also the relationship with time. You allow time to pass and you allow that time to affect the work. Things happen that you didn't do. And giving yourself opportunities to make many interpretations in this way can also allow you more of a sense of freedom in your time. So you can set something aside and let it just uh, begin to set up or dry or shift or be while you go on and explore something else and try again. A small dot, a big dot. Um, I'm painting with red. Jamie's painting with blue. This could be an enterprise that takes us all across the rainbow. We could get into tie-dye or little landscapes within each sphere. It really is one of those kinds of simple constraints, this circle of water, this, this round form that um, suggests possibilities. You don't have to come into it with an idea, but the ideas begin to emerge out of the playful exploration. Like hearts with Valentine's Day just around the corner, hearts just started to pop up all over the studio today. And then the heart sort of became a tie-dye with blotting away and letting gravity pull it to the edges. And um, But I wasn't done with this heart yet. So I just made a heart of pure water that went around that first heart. And I wanted to see what would happen if I just tipped in some yellow and some blue, some red. Out my window, I'm looking at the Gualala River, where the Gualala River meets the sea. And I thought, well, what if I just made a big negative space, a big shape of water that's just what isn't that spit of land and the sand and the trees, and um, explored making something that simple and covering the paper with water to begin to lay in an, an atmospheric feeling. There's a, a difference in what happens when you bring that color right in just in that fresh early stage when the water is sort of sitting on top of the paper. And there's another way that the paint moves when you let that water sink in for a while. 
the water keeps moving the paint. Even after you've laid down a brush stroke, it continues to move and change and contribute its own voice to what you're doing. And giving yourself enough time to make a lot of experiments, play with different brushes, round brushes, square brushes, small brushes, big brushes, um, different in different intensities of color, different amounts of water, different amounts of time passing, even just within this, the confines of a small watercolor kit and a few scraps of watercolor paper, you can create a range of expression and a range of ideas. Here on the edge of the sea, we're in Wallala and in the Sea Ranch for the month of February. We're looking out at the horizon every day, all day long, and witnessing the most glorious sunsets, introducing some bright color, some bright sunny color to this little piece. It's kind of playing with the idea of what we wit are witnessing at the end of the days here a little record, a visual journal of the seascape. So I, I like to really um, give that color time to absorb the water before I, I go into the painting. So and now I'm loading my brush up with that paint and I'm just tipping into the edge of my big dot and I'm just touching one corner of it and watching what happens. And I'm following that edge of the dot just a bit so that I can see, make a little bit more of an impact. And I'm gonna pick up the paper and let gravity do a little work too. The water wants to pull the color into it. Now I'm moving around to another section of the, um, the dot. What am I doing? I ask myself. I am observing what the medium wants to do. And this is this is the thing with um, with making art. I find often that I get stuck because I feel like I don't have an idea or I don't have enough facility with the tools I'm working with. I don't know how they work. And those two things can really be a factor. They could be two whammies. Like one thing is holding you back because you don't have your idea yet. Maybe you have an idea, but you don't know what to do with it because you don't know how, you're, know how your materials work. Or you say, I'm not good at this. I never took a class in watercolor or whatever it is. And what I have found again and again for decades and decades now, <laughs> it's getting longer and longer, Peggy, the years go by. Um, the great teacher is actually the materials themselves to let these materials, which in this case is really simple. We're talking about water, we're talking about watercolor, and we're talking about paper. I mean, that's what's holding all of this together. If you give yourself that opportunity, just let those three materials, this thing that we are so 
um, scarce on is we don't have enough time. So allowing yourself the time to see what this wants to tell you. So I'm, in, I'm bringing in another element. I'm bringing in the element of gravity. Aaron, I'm gonna just interject for, for a second. For you, you hope you that we have the worst Aaron game, and I'm learning. Follow where it wants to so, go. So you know, watching you making this beautiful circle with the <laughs> simple watercolors the simple brushes and the gravity. This is what uh, radio listeners, you're missing the view of it, but it will be broadcast later on uh, YouTube. Uh, learning, uh, learning a lot. So I'm, I just mm -hmm. have to let our radio audience know that you're listening to Aaron Gaffel and uh, Awakening the Artist Within is the name of today's show. We're gonna do this every Friday with Aaron and Tom every Friday in February. So I'm gonna back off again, but thank you, Aaron. This is just fascinating to watch. Oh, and thank you so much for reminding me that not everybody can see what I'm doing. They're hearing my voice, but I, I might wanna explain that what we are looking at now is this really large, beautiful red saturated um, dot on a piece of white paper. And we're watching the paint move around and around until it starts to settle down. And I'm looking at it, you know, I'm looking at it through the camera to see how it's moving. I'm also looking at it in real, real time and I'm holding the piece of paper and I'm picking it up and letting that water tell its story. And I'm gonna introduce another element now, which is, um, I'm gonna take, or not an element exactly, but uh, just a piece of tissue paper and um, my first, my first um, teacher in watercolor always referred to this as this very special artist paper, which is just tissue paper, toilet paper, Kleenex. And I'm gonna make a little crumple with it. I'm crumpling up the end and I'm going to dab away just a little bit from one side. I'm just dabbing away to make one side of this shape a little bit lighter. And as I'm dabbing away, that's lightening up. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more pigment to the darker side of my form. And what happens when you make one side of a form a little bit lighter and you make the other side a little bit darker is you end up having something that's dimensional. You get this sense of light moving across three-dimensional form and you have light, you have the middle tone and you have the dark. And I'm still only working with, with the one color. I haven't added any other colors so far. This is just a red dot. And something you'll notice, especially if you're not, if you're not someone who's worked with water media a lot, um, you might not know that when you place water on paper, it creates sort of a magneticism around uh, <clears throat> what's happening. The water color wants to stay in that dot. If I pick up the paper, the water color doesn't want to jump the fence. It wants to stay right in that watery world, uh, which is really fascinating. If I pick it up and, and move it too dramatically, it might jump over. But the water gives you kind of this playground, that clear dot that we started with in the beginning. It gives you this, this capacity to just create a little world in which something is happening. And if I go back, if I want to sort of repeat that experiment, I can come up around that dot and I'm just bringing in now a line. I'm bringing in that same brush with clear water and I'm making a line of water, and that's gonna go all the way around in loop-de-doop fashion. And in other words, not a perfect circle, just the best that I can do. And this is really just now another playground. I've given myself another playground and I'm going to pick up a different color. Again, I'm gonna give myself water, enough water to make that color that I'm re reaching in with my brush into this deep midnight blue color. 
and I'm adding water to that color, mixing it up so it becomes kind of a thicker, you know, it goes from being a cake of color to now being like a broth, a rich broth. And I'm mm -hmm. adding, dipping in with my brush to that, that new color. And I'm touching my new playground. I'm touching into that beautiful, clear, loop de doop de circle. And that water just picked that color up and pulled it one way and pulled it another. Initially, the water just sort of sits on top of the paper. So the other thing you're going to notice when you're working with water mediums is that there's a certain amount of time that passes before the water sinks into the paper to the level where you really want it to be. Initially, the water is out of control. It's that, you know, you touch it and wow, it takes over. Or maybe I should say the water is in control and you're not the one in control. Um, that's one of the aspects of painting with water media is that you're inviting into the process the water itself because it has its own way of working. And that's what makes it so frustrating or so exciting, both at the same time. Uh, once you learn the kind of balance of you controlling it or it controlling you, I think you have the most fun. I'm going back in now and I'm adding a little bit of yellow just to see what happens when I introduce a second two colors in the same little arena. So that yellow, as I tip in with my yellow and encroach a bit onto that little blue world, the blue and the yellow are marrying into this beautiful green. So the blue and the yellow hold the sides around the red form. And then as they connect on that circle of water, they become a new color. They become the color green. And this is an experiment and color mixing that you could play with for a long time and keep coming up with. You could make rectangles with different uh, colors, yellow on one end, blue on the other. And as they come together, making a beautiful green or you try blue and red. When you get a new, to a new toy, toy to play with and you get a new box of colors, it's so marvelous to give yourself time to experiment and see what each color does with each other color in your paint box. Uh, it's the best way to learn, you know, as opposed to going to a book and opening a book to see um, what this and that do, which takes you a certain distance. If you just give yourself that same amount of time and make some experiments with actually getting your brushes wet, giving yourself some time to make things that are not challenging you on every level. They're not making you have to be, you don't have to be a great drawer, you know, or a great colorist or a great, you know, I, I was not the kid in school who everybody thought was going to grow up to be an artist, but I really like playing with art medium. Erin, this is so wonderful to watch. Peggy Berry Hill at KGUA in Wallala. So those of you who are listening on the radio, you're going to have to create your own pictures. As a, And we are recording this for later broadcast on the video part of it on YouTube. We're not doing a live YouTube as uh, today. So if you're looking for KGUA's YouTube channel to be live, it's not live now, but we will broadcast this later. Erin Lee Gaffel is has just drawn this beautiful uh, reddish pink circle and surrounded it with different colors. It's so simple and it's so evocative. And I have to say, Erin, when you first did the big circle, I had to laugh because while well, the circle is pink surrounded by white and you're wearing a kind of a pinkish top with white dots on it. So you were kind of mirroring yourself. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> But anyway, I just want the audience that, uh, to know. Get the picture. <laughs> yeah, get the picture. Thank you. Get the picture. And uh, this is so much fun to watch. And I'm so glad what you're saying, because, you know, uh, I would have thought that you were the kid in the class who just did beautiful drawings instantly, whether it was with pen or ink or anything. And uh, I was always the kid that could not, you know, would be in art class and just not know anything and feel like I had nothing to offer. So this is yeah. 
And I also want to, I'm going to turn the mic back to you, but we have folks, almost 70 viewers. This is how Aaron's followers, and I can see them doing whatever it is they're doing. Some of them I think are painting, maybe all of them. Uh, anyway, I'm going to be quiet. This is KGA in Wallala, 88.3 FM. I'll just come in every few minutes and every 10 minutes or so and remind you, unless you've stunned me, Aaron, and I have to say, oh my gosh, <laughs> right to talk and say, let me in. All right. Uh, all right. I know. I'm sorry. I start going off and then I, I, I forget to take a breath. So, um, but I think this idea of uh, how we perceive ourselves, you know, our early identification, our, our identification around, am I good at something? This can be really damaging because we often get messages as children that are, we are not good at something and that I am not good at whatever you fill in the blank. For me, I would say I'm not good at singing. Oh, I love to sing. Don't get me singing, Peggy. Um, this idea that you're not good at is such a block. It's such a prevention, it prevents us from exploring something. And I think it was Kurt Vonnegut who, who wrote an essay about, it's not about being good at, it's about being human. It's about exploring interests. That's it. And that's where you start and that's all you do. And from there comes everything else. So we're gonna explore some new tools now in, in honor of Valentine's Day. This is really fun. Um, let me see what I've done. So what I, well, actually I'll start off showing you this one little thing I used to do a lot with kids. And it was really fun to just see their astonishment when this would happen where I would draw something on a piece of paper and then I would pick up um, and really load my brush with, um, with paint and go across the surface of that paper with my loaded brush and this, this thing would become revealed. And um, I think we had just had an epic winter storm in Big Sur and everybody went lightning <laughs> because I had, I had used an invisible wax marker to, which is, I mean, an invisible wax marker, which is a fancy word for a candle, just a candle. Everybody in Big Sur had lost power. Everybody was really familiar with having candle light as your only source of light in the evenings. So we all had these discarded candle tape, white caper, tapered candles around. And, um, but nobody was expecting that we were going to use them for our art classes. But again, it's like use what you have and start where you are with where, whatever your adventure is. So we had these candles, the kids came over to our house a couple of days a week for emergency school because the schools were closed, because the highway was closed, because the rains had taken out parts of highway one in 17 different places. And no one could get to school. The teachers couldn't even get into Big Sur. It was a, it was a huge deal. And uh, so we set up these makeshift art classes and math classes and writing classes and everything else classes in living rooms around the community. And it was an incredible adventure in this concept of using what you have and starting where you are. So I'm trying this again with my crayon and not my crayon, but my white tapered candle and making a little heart shape underneath a flood of red. And it's got this kind of coming and going waxy resist that lets you know it's a heart, but it also is one of those things where you can't really tell as you're drawing your design if it's working or not, because it really only reveals itself after you've flooded the surface with, with the color. So sometimes it comes out really strong and, and striking, you know, with like that big, that big shazam with the lightning across the sky, which is behind, now it's got this blue background making it pop. And sometimes you're like, ah, oh, not quite. <laughs> it's an experiment, try again. 
So one of the other things that I love to tell my students to do and that I do myself um, pretty religiously is make another, do it again, you know? Don't let your first attempt be your only attempt because there is just so much more freedom knowing that you're gonna make a series of these things. I think I made uh, 20 little hearts the other day when I was filming the video with Tom and our friend Jamie, who came over to be my guinea pig. And you can take your paper, what I'm using right now is this white cotton watercolor paper. And the thing to know also is that paper is going to change your outcomes. If you're working on um, a notebook paper, sketchbook paper that might be thinner or newsprint or um, anything else that's not, you know, all these papers are made with different things, wood pulp or cotton or combinations. They will do different things with the water and the color and the wax and the pressure matters. So, you know, when we say, oh, no, it doesn't matter, just do it. Well, everything matters. It's just knowing that it doesn't matter if it's good or bad. It matters that you're paying attention to what you're doing. And as you, just like in the beginning of when we started, when you put that water onto the, onto the center of the paper and you watch that water sink in, you, you pay attention, you know, you notice what is it doing and it teaches you. So if the paper doesn't take that wax very well, well, maybe you didn't push down hard enough or maybe it's not the best paper for this process or maybe you wanna to switch to a candle or something or to a crayon. Um, so you, you wanna be adaptable, you wanna try it, see if it works. If it doesn't work, try something else. So I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna take some water and dip it into that red and I'm just gonna lay it across that waxy, waxy surface that's now a heart in the middle of my paper. I did two, I, I drew two hearts uh, on two different pieces of watercolor paper. And what I'm gonna do to help it out a little bit is just again, dab away at that spot where, the, where I want that wax to come through. And I kind of like the gestural feelings of these. These are not labored. They're not labored love letters. They're just fresh gestural. It's just sort of a, a laying down of color. And then that wax heart shines through the color and or whatever you want it to be. It could be you're inscribing your daughter's name in cursive. And um, it could be a flower. It could be all kinds of different things. Or it's a but Valentine. this is February. <laughs> it is. It's an or it's a Valentine. Yes. And if you fold your your experimental paper in half like so, and you do your your experiment this way, and I'm gonna do one more just for the fun of it. And if you get it wet first. This is a new technique <laughs> and I'm gonna use yellow. I'm going around that heart because I can see it now since I got it wet, it would revealed itself. I'm going around it with color and that wax barrier is keeping me from entering into that part of the heart. So now I have this outside and then this inside. And I'm gonna just add a little bit of orange just for fun over here. I'm just playing, seeing what happens. And I'm just taking this into and spreading it out into that yellow. So this is now merging. And then the center color, can I could leave it just white and let it be what it is, or I could add in some color. And that waxy barrier is gonna let me not be perfect, right? I mean, messing around here. So we're not, no expectations, but that waxy barrier is gonna allow me to really have a rich color going right into that center. 
and keep that from merging into the blue. The blue is not gonna merge into the yellow and orange because I have that there. So what you might try at home, if you are wanting to play around with this with kids or making Valentine's friends is uh, uh, with, with, with the, with can also do it with, a, with, with crayons. Make barriers, make shapes, make hearts where you're using colored crayons. It has, does the same thing that waxy effect happens. And um, it's a really fun kind of way to, to play around with kids where you have colored lines and then washes of watercolor coming over it and making these wonderful little paintings for each other. And because I did this on a folded piece of paper, now it is a proper whoop, card. So for those who are not watching, my blue heart, because I picked up the card a little too soon, uh, merged with my orange and yellow background. Karen? So there you go, gravity. And yes. uh, I just want to let you know how much fun this is, but also I'm kind of zooming through some of your participants. There are about almost 70 participants right now. And uh, watching their comments as they are uh, struggling, joy. I see their arms moving, looking down at their papers, and some of them are just kind of like me in awe of how easy this is. And Aaron was showing us how to just use a candle, an everyday candle, and draw using that to draw an outline of her heart or whatever you wanted. And then you could paint around it. And uh, it's just, mm -hmm. just so cool, Erin. Thank you for all of those participants for uh, our silent participants on radio. And that was funny, Erin. You had uh -huh. a little mistake there that the paint bled. Bye. Oh, for yeah, now. that's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, that happened. So, you know, that's one of the things that I'll bring back my mistake. Um, you know, it's like if I was just doing one experiment and this is what happened and I was like so discouraged because I'm like, oh, I suck at this. This isn't working for me. I did it wrong. Well, how, how awful, but I mean, don't do one, do 50, um, give yourself time to do more and be kind to yourself. This is the thing that we get so hard on ourselves about the things that we feel like we've done wrong. And um, more than anything, it's approaching what you do artistically with an experimental attitude, you know, an attitude of playfulness, because when you get really, um, and we all do, I mean, I'm not pointing any fingers, believe me, when I get really um, worried about making a mistake, the fun goes out the window. It's not fun anymore. And, and then my capacity to really think creatively diminishes and I'm just so, stuck you know I'm stuck in a terrible place and um, so I, I really feel I had another wonderful teacher whose name was Gregory Condos who just passed away uh, this I believe it was uh, last year late last year he said the most important thing is your attitude and um, he's right because that attitude of playfulness experimentation let's just try this is going to let you stay in it long enough to develop more mastery. I'm gonna use a pencil now just to do something, uh, very, a very light pencil line to show you the, this is my view at my window in my studio in Walala. So you can barely see it, but it's just a silhouette, but I'm gonna, it's gonna become clearer in a minute. I'm switching, oh, well, my water is a little bit less than clean, but it's not really dirty. So um, maybe, oh, thank you, Jean. We're gonna get some fresh, clean water over here. So I am, I should have done that earlier. I can't see this on the, on the computer screen, but what I'm doing is I'm taking about a five inch by seven inch piece of watercolor paper and I'm putting down a very simple line of the silhouette of what I see, thank you so much. Clean, fresh water, a watercolor artist, best friend. And I'm, I'm going to just take the, um, I'm, thank you so much. This is a full service operation around here. Um, I'm gonna take my water and I'm gonna take my, my 
wider brush and I'm gonna come in and just paint water around the edge of that silhouette. So you can barely see this. I mean, I don't think you can actually see there's the line that the pencil line is so light, but I'm going in and I'm just covering all of the space above the silhouette of land that I drew all the way from edge to edge and top to side to side and top to bottom. And I'm going down to the water's edge and then into the watery space that's the ocean. And I'm just not painting with water anything other than what isn't there really is how I think of it. It's a, it's a really kind of an uh, experiment in negative space because we think of positive space as something that is there like a tree or a beach or a house or an apple. Um, but when you paint what isn't there, that's what we call painting the negative. And I'm go I've just painted the negative with water and now I'm gonna go in with that same brush and I'm going to start up top and come across and paint all, let that come all the way down to the edge of my pencil line. And you don't actually need a pencil line, but sometimes it's nice to have just a little reminder of where you're going. And I'm just coming all the way down to the edge of that silhouette. And I'm not adding any more paint to my brush. Each time I go across, I was just sort of, initially I had quite a bit, but um, then it was just the brush kind of running out of paint. So you can see, um, or I'll describe it if you can't see, that the, the sky fills in with a deep blue. And as it moves down to the edge of the ocean, that blue lightens and lightens and lightens until it sort of dissolves into the ocean. And now I'm coming in again with a, a dark line of blue on the horizon line and bringing that into the water from left to right and back again until all of that watery space fills up with color. And I see I have quite a bit of extra color that's kind of gathering in the lower right corner of my paper. I'm going to go, I'm gonna give that gravity a little job to pull that paint down at the bottom. And then with my dry brush, I'm just picking up that extra water and removing it. And then I'm gonna let this sit here and dry. And what I have now is a painting that is of the sky and the water surrounding Wallala Beach, which is the view from my studio at the Cypress Village. And it's just two shapes, really. It's the shape of what, of the land mass, and it's the shape of everything else, which is essentially a mirroring of sky and water above and below. And um, it's a beautiful way to do something really simple, but powerful that conveys place or conveys something when you, um, when you just wanna create a big statement. This can be a beautiful, elegant and Zen way to do that. And you might go out, your, look out your window and see if you can find a little view. Maybe it's the shape of sky around a tree, let's say, and that's what you're painting. So um, I think that, you know, this might be a good time, Peggy, to open up the floor to anybody who's zooming in with us today and they may want to share what they're doing, what they've done, and or if they have any questions. I think it's great. So anybody want to share? I see a lot of movement as I'm zooming through and uh, you can tell people are concentrating. Aha, uh -huh. I don't know who this is, but she's showing her hearts, uh, two oh. hearts. Heart with, did you see that? Go, can you hold that up again? Let me, let me see if I can change my view to gallery, I think, and that will show me every, wow, look at all of you fabulous people. Oh, I see yeah. Meg has hearts. That is oh, so Oh, Diane, you, Diane, you have a lot going on there. That is so cool. Hey, everybody. 
Anybody? Oh, great oh, to see you. Here. Oh, here's someone new. Hi. You want to say oh, something? Allison? I see Allison has um, pieces up. I'm just moving through the gallery. Oh, there's seeing, some more hearts. Going back this way. You want so to one thing I'm I was wondering about is um, I was imagining if I were um, home doing this right now, I would probably be doing it in bed with it like a breakfast tray and everything on it and saying to Tom bring me some coffee <laughs> so um <laughs> Tom's really good at that um but um, what I'm going to invite you all to do is if that's okay Peggy if I can invite people to raise their hand and then Tom can spotlight them absolutely I was just going to remind people you're listening to KGUA in Gualala 88.3 FM if you're listening on the radio we are recording this so that we can present it to you later and uh, maybe we're going to do this every Friday of February with uh, Aaron uh, and Tom and this is so wonderful is I, uh, we've, we're about 64 participants in addition to Aaron and our staff here who are fascinated as I am, who I am, you know, I can do things with microphones and sound. And uh, I was not born painting, I was born talking. So <laughs> that I can do. So it's fascinating to be having been raised also around an artist. So yeah, let's open the mics. Anybody have any comments for us? Yeah, I think if you raise your hand, um, I think with the uh, the raise your hand button on Zoom, Tom can um, feature you and you can ask your question or if you have a comment um, that you wanna share. And, um, or I might call on you. <laughs> I see Lisa Camillo. Hi, Lisa. Do you want to say hi and tell us what you're up to? I'm picking on Lisa. No hi. Hey, Lisa. Everyone, it's so good to see you. So good to see you too. A minute. I'm going to ask Tom to spotlight you for a minute so we can hear from you and everybody can see you. Do you think you could push the raise your hand button on your screen? Can and that I? way, um, can you, do you know where, how to do that? I let me yes there we go I see it okay so Tom's gonna see if he can spotlight you um but if he can't I'm I just want to hmm. say I so I, I I see your hand raised so he's yes. he, I think there um, I am I want to know hi everybody how did, how did you uh set your whoop, how did you whoops my mom, when she first got a computer, was so afraid of using it because she was sure she was going to break everything. Took a while, guess who I that have is. to admit, I often think, oh my God, <laughs> I just pushed this is a live okay. Zoom. Yeah, okay, there we go. here we go. Yeah. So if everybody else can be muted, then I, we can hear Lisa um, tell us about how she set up for today and what she's up to with this project. Um, this is one of my favorite types of, well, anything that I do with Erin is a favorite, always. This Thank time you. of year, of course, with Valentine's, we've done many things in the past together with making Valentine's and such. This is really exciting to do just because it's more the same and it's because it's, it's a, for me, these kind of things really set my day in a positive way and really make me feel like I'm doing something, not only for me, but really for me, but for just mm -hmm. in general, how I feel and how it goes out to others. And uh, so this morning was pretty much, oh my God, I forgot to put the zoo, oh my God. <laughs> so it was kind of a little bit of running around, but I got my, my paper and I got my, okay. you know, and I got everything out because I've moved all my art stuff. So I, it's a crapshoot kind of where everything is, but we got oh, it together yeah. and Great. it's always a joy to do this. And it's wonderful that you're going to be doing this for a month on Saturdays. Oh, thank you so much. And or on Fridays, it's excuse great. me. <laughs> on Fridays. Let's bring Meg in. I see Meg has raised her hand. So maybe we can bring Meg into the conversation. Um, if you're in, if you, if you live in Wallala and are around where we are right now, you can join us on Mondays for um, 
for knitting also if you're a textile artist um, we're working on just having community knit knitting stitching whatevering at the sea ranch lodge at 4 p.m so if you're local come join us and we'll have fun together um hey so is that meg yeah Erin. Hey. thank you so, thank you so much for offering this for us uh, I just wanted to say that today has been very helpful. I'm a very beginning level student, and I was fortunate to be able to be outdoors last weekend, and I decided to try to paint plain air, and I was afraid to put more water down on the paper. And I was afraid of ruining the sketch that I had started by applying the color and this has been very freeing being able to just not have a plan not have a design just put the water down on the paper put the color down on the paper experiment with varying amounts of each tilting the paper letting it flow letting it dry it's been really helpful thank you very much oh meg that's awesome i'm so glad that that has been useful for you and i know what you're talking about being out plan air and you just get i'm gonna ruin it or you do something good and then you think you're gonna ruin it by doing something else and you just can get really paralyzed meg where I are get you over, i know I, that oh i'm in twain heart up in the mountains okay in, in the sierras but i will be going be out to a sea ranch for one weekend in february i'm taking a little vacation and I was able to reserve a place out there near the lodge for a couple of nights. And oh, I'm really great. looking, I'm really looking forward to it. So Meg, that's this awesome. is Peggy. That's Please fantastic. drop by KGUA and say hi. We're at Cypress Village. All right. I'm Thank gonna, you. I'm gonna bring Kathleen Donahue into the conversation because she's raised her hand and we still have a few more minutes. Good morning. Good morning. This is Old so friend. wonderful. Um, and thank you again for, you know, I just love seeing you and Tom so much. And the fact that you keep reminding us to bring the fun. And I know when I see you and we have these sessions and these classes that the emphasis on fun and keeping mm -hmm. that joy is fantastic. And I'm somebody who does love happy accidents. And one thing that I love mm -hmm. that came out of this was mm -hmm the happy accident of this terracotta jug pouring out is, mm -hmm. and I feel like, oh, I found this new object that I'd love to create a pattern or something with. Um, yeah. So <laughs> it's just- I love that. I just, you do it again and repeat, repeat, repeat. And then it looks like yeah. you totally did it on purpose, right? It just becomes right. your design. <laughs> <laughs> And are you are you calling in from San Francisco today? I am. I am. Yes. Great. Fantastic. Well, it's really great to see you. Wonderful and to see um, you. we'll be doing this every every Friday morning at 9 a.m. And I'll be here. <laughs> um, so we'll we'll move it around this week. It's water media next week. Who knows, right? We're always like wanting to stay inspired ourselves and keep it fresh and keep it creative. Um, so um, on Mondays, I'll be doing textile arts down at the uh, Sea Ranch Lodge at 4 p.m. every Monday for the month of February. And then at the end of the month, uh, February 24th and 25th, I have a two-day in-person workshop with the Glalala, Glalala Arts Center, which I think may be on the verge of being sold out, but it may, they've developed a waiting list. And we're looking at figuring out Zoom options for that too, for people who want to participate, but can't come up here. So we're trying to stay creative and inventive best we can. Just a quick short reminder while we're waiting for our next guest, uh, this is KGUA in Wallala, 88.3 FM community supported radio. And we are having a great time this morning. I am certainly having fun and seeing all of these faces from wherever you are. So come on and join us since it is radio. Uh, they can't see your faces, but they'd love to hear your voices. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, um, one thing I'm going to say, and again, I'm going to just put out an invitation to any of you who would like to to join in this conversation and um, raise your hand if you want to. But um, every week, Peggy 
has so graciously invited us. And this is the power, I think, I mean, to have a, a local radio station that wants to make these offerings available to their community and their community now extending beyond, far beyond um, the geography of where we are, but to a much broader world through the magic of technology. It's such an incredible thing to have this opportunity to bring these ideas to the world in this way. And thank you so much, Peggy, for thinking this sounded like a good idea and, and making it happen because hey, this is Peggy's place, you know? So we're really grateful to be here. But I wanna just say that for everybody who is um, participating today, we're always gonna be entering into each week with an attitude of experimentation and play. And it's never going to require that you have skills in anything that we're doing. It's, it's really exploring and attempting and trying and doing this and doing that and not layering on to what we do judgments of whether it was good or bad. And that's almost like impossible for us because we're so wired to be judging our own work, judging each other. Um, so to actually to consciously be giving yourself a mental break from judging, you can decide, I'm going to spend an hour in non-judgment and notice what that is like. And let me tell you, it's a powerful tool to cultivate simply being with color, being with materials, being with intention and, and letting judgment be left out of that mixture. It can be incredibly satisfying and joyful. Um, I think Kathleen mentioned that word joy to access a sense of joyfulness um, instead of trepidation or fear or self-criticism, which is often our go-to. And we can go to art thinking we're getting the one thing and we're getting the other thing instead. And then we just pack it away. So um, every, every Friday morning at 9 a.m. will be maybe for you an hour to practice non-judgment and allow what is to be and see where it goes. I see a lot of faces up here, Erin. You may know some of them. Um, we have a lot of women. Do we have any men up there who would like to make a comment? It would be nice to hear a lot of different voices. Since this is radio, that's our, our lifeblood is voice. And, uh, and of course, sharing your experiences. I'm, I'm enjoying this. Oh, here we have someone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is, that, is that Juan? Yes. Good morning, Erin. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks so much for putting this program available for people. Thank you so much for participating. I'm so delighted to see you. I, uh, I'm an old uh, resident of that area. Recently had to relocate. And so I'm, I'm getting my big sur fix still through you vicariously. Uh, it was okay. fun with the watercolors this morning. I had some um, very success with the flow technique and I think it's because my paper is too heavy. You mentioned that at the beginning and I'm sure that's what it is. My water's not really soaking into my paper. So I, I was able to play with the gravity technique uh, to, to good effect and uh, but I, I, I was able to follow what you're talking about. Again, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for participating and um, it's great to see an old neighbor. <laughs> um, it's been really lovely to be up in this part of the coast because I think we all get very provincial wherever we are, it becomes like the everything and then to expand out into the larger world. And with the last two years, we haven't been really on the road as much as we usually are teaching and showing. So um, it's been an opportunity for us, for Tom and me to come up to Walala and the Sea Ranch and um, sink in. We're here for one whole month painting and we'll be doing plein air painting on the location of the Sea Ranch Lodge, which is right next to the sea. Um, so if there are any painters out there, please feel invited to come and join us on Saturdays at 11 a.m. every Saturday morning. Um, I or one of my, my invited uh, artists who are 
amazing artists, Paul Ricard, who's a, a watercolor artist, Gage Optenbrow, who's here this weekend, well, Kate Worthen, who's a magnificent painter, um, almost to abstraction with her landscape pieces from the uh, from Marina. They'll be here doing demonstrations at 11 a.m. And then we'll paint all day together and do a wet paint reception at four in the afternoon on the property of the Sea Ranch Lodge. So for local people, that's an opportunity uh, throughout the month. And I see Karen has her hand raised. Karen, can we have you up and up and featured and uh, you can unmute yourself. Good morning from Chile, Arizona. <laughs> Good morning. It was 20 degrees here this morning and that's not why I moved to Arizona. Um, ah. Anyway, I just wanted to say that no matter how many times I do this exercise with you, uh, it's just a wonderful thing. It really just helps you to relax. It's very freeing. I'll share my little mm. dots and my oh. little heart. And amazingly, wonderful. I don't have any crayons and I don't have any candles. Mm. Uh, so, <laughs> so I guess that's something I'm gonna have to work on because uh, I couldn't do the little wax resist thing. But anyway, yeah, maybe you could get a birthday, a set of birthday candles. They'll be a nice, handleable size. Oh, that's a good idea. Yes. Yeah, where are you in uh, Arizona? I was just down in Sedona for two weeks. Oh, well, I'm sorry that I missed you. I live in Rimrock, which oh. is 20 minutes from Sedona. I, I used to live in Sedona, but it got way too crazy, busy, touristy, traffic y. Uh, so I moved 20 minutes away and now I'm out where the cattle roam. Excellent. Oh, it's beautiful. And the weather was gorgeous there. It was in the 60s every day. It has been. Awesome. awesome. Well, yeah, which is, why the, which is why the 20 degrees is not so welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Well, thank you for hosting this. This is so much fun, Aaron. And, you know, we're going to, we only have about four minutes left here. So anybody else uh, want to talk? And uh, I do have a question. I'm wondering, will there be, a, what if people want to follow your lessons, but maybe they want to use their iPad or their iPhone uh, instead mm -hmm. of actual uh, paper and water? Yeah, no, I think you can do that nowadays. Um, it's incredible the programs available um, on on iPads. Uh, my son uses an app called Heavy Paint, and I've used an app called Procreate. And you know, I I've kind of stayed in the world of the physical mediums. But I see amazing things that people are doing out there with these these really cool apps that you can do that mimic and and in some cases transcend the possibilities of the physical medium. So you can kind of work in a watercolor vein or a oil painting vein by just changing the settings. And then something that's really cool about an app like that is that you can decide you want to try it in a different color 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 way. So you can just by the flick of a button or whatever, an arrow, shift say a blue negative space painting to a green one or lay in a layer of color or add an element and take it away again. And it's all happening in this mysterious you know, world that doesn't exist physically yet unless you print it out. Uh, so it's a, it's a very, very compelling way to explore if you don't have access to or want to get into the physicality of paint. And, and such. Um, yeah, so that's an option for people, for sure. We just have a couple of minutes left, folks. So please uh, raise your hand. We could hear a couple of more voices before we uh, leave this very first experimental session of this radio with pictures, <laughs> I call it. That's right. And uh, uh, this is just great fun. I am so enjoying and learning. Oh, that's so great. Well, thank you so much, Peggy. And I just want to say that you know when we we wanted to come up and do this this month up here, um, we we talked to everybody that we knew who we'd worked with in the past and asked them if they wanted to collaborate in some way. Um, Maynard and Lou Linden of Linden Design Gallery, which is in the Sea Ranch, 
on Annapolis Road. Um, they're the, my gallerists in the area and have been for 10 years. And they were just so uh, supportive of creating an exhibition opportunity for all the artists coming up this month to do work with us. And the Sea Ranch Lodge gave us lodging for the month uh, to enable us to have a month here of creative offerings and, and do painting. And Greg at the Cypress Village gave us a space to rent that is allowing me to do very, very large six foot by eight foot canvases that are just totally experimenting with all of the techniques that I'm teaching here, but in oil paint. So um, we have felt really welcomed by the communities of Wallala and the Sea Ranch. And um, this is a first for us, Peggy. So your invitation to do this on the radio um, as seen on the radio, you know, with the whole YouTube and the Zoom options is really fun and maybe just the beginning of something new and wonderful. I, I, I absolutely love it. And we will for our, our uh, audience, we're not broadcasting live on KJA's YouTube channel today, but it will be posted on KJA's uh, YouTube channel later today. And uh, Tom and I will continue to experiment in the man behind the curtain. We have to thank Tom Birmingham for making this so simple and uh, enabling us all to pull this these uh, visual and audio mediums together in the computer and i'm having a great time uh, just you know enjoying it being a voyeur here and a listener uh aaron uh we're just about out of time here uh we have time for one short up oh, we're out of time we are out of time we have to go uh we're going to go to albuquerque but thank you so much for this very first uh, lesson of, um, uh, I forgot the title, uh, but uh, you know, bringing mm -hmm. your creativity with uh, Aaron Gaffel and uh, Tom Burningham in the background. This is KGA in Wallala. We're going to have to leave you now and uh, go back to our, our audio programs. We're going to go to Albuquerque, New Mexico for Native America Calling. I'm Peggy Berryhill. <laughs>